So my DK2 is finally here in all of its glory. And I know I've covered this thing to death from different events and even my Oculus overview video from back in the day. If you wanna learn things about like low persistence and stuff, check that video out. If you wanna see what Linus Media Group as a whole thinks and a special guest, what he thinks as well, carry on in this video. We'll see all of their footage and then I'll talk to you guys more about the finer details of it later on. The Flash Voyager GTX USB 3 drive from Corsair provides SSD-like performance and fits comfortably in your pocket. Click now to learn more. Yay! Oh, this makes me happy. Why does it look like the inside of a vagina? Wow, that would be even now. He remembers. <laughs> He's the chosen one. Whoa. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I was behind the headrest for a minute. Yeah. Oh, this me up. I feel like I can touch stuff, except that I can't, except that <laughs> there is something here. But that's the desk, not like <laughs> the fence. It is, it is actually visually distressing looking down a cliff though. Like you, there's a real sense of, of depth down there. Ah oh man, this, this thumbstick versus yeah. head movement yeah. is really, I really feel like it, you, you don't think that it should be you just head and then left thumbstick? Yeah, and it's definitely weird to have a controller, but then be able to just turn your head and see all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at all this stuff around me. I'm in a world. <laughs> Leaning too far back. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't think there's any. Here, I'll take the controller. Okay, here we go. All right, it's jittering. Whoa. Yeah, I noticed the same thing. Uh, ah. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Let me know if you want to. Yeah, out. There we go. Terrible. <laughs> Who in their right mind wants to do that? Yeah! This is great. I love it. Who? No, seriously, does anyone enjoy that last one you just gave me? I do. I might not be. Come on, you do or... not. You actually enjoy it? I like that one. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon wanted sustain at the most. <laughs> so he's the craziest of all of this. Man. Due to it being a pentile matrix display instead of a square grid display, the screen door effect isn't nearly as noticeable. Um, you can still see the pixels, obviously, but not nearly as much as on the DK1. And obviously the resolution jumped helped as well, but we're still gonna need higher resolutions, 4K, I'm looking at you. The low persistence is great, but its refresh rate could be a little bit higher. We're currently at 75, could do with maybe about 90. And one thing that we noticed is that frame rate in games needs to be high and it needs to be consistently high. Low frame rate dips even will really, really jar you out of the game and it's very unsettling actually. Games also need to be made for the Rift in mind, especially the Rift in mind. They need to be high quality. Most of what we have right now is more tech demos than anything, but something to remember is that we're using a development kit. So that kind of makes sense. Another thing that could help is more range on the motion tracking camera or possibly an array of cameras. It's quite easy to get out of the tracking zone even in a seated experience, which is what it's supposed to be targeted for. Also, we need more made for VR controllers. Something like the, on the lines of the Control VR would really help because having your hands stuck in position while your hands are actually moving in real life really disconnects and breaks the immersion. That being said, the USB 2.0 hub on the top of the DK2 does kind of help with that because if you want to ghetto mount, say, a leap motion onto the top of your unit, it is possible. And that's pretty cool that they're trying to cater to that type of user. Due to the new, more compact form factor, it actually feels considerably lighter due to less leverage, but it still could feel lighter. It's still a little bit heavy on the front of your face considering it is hanging off of the front of your face. Also, the new cabling system is quite fantastic and much more easy to deal with than the DK1, but it would be really nice if you didn't need the cables, although I'm not really looking for that anytime soon. I don't expect that to be on CV1. I don't even expect that to be on like CV3. So I'm not too worried about that. Speaking of cabling, the cable box that goes in between your Oculus unit and your computer has gotten much more elegant. It used to be this fairly large, little bit clunky box that you had to kind of have a dedicated spot for. And now it's an inline module that can just hang anywhere and it's not really that big of a deal. Huge improvement. Again, speaking of cables, they're quite long, but 
Maybe not long enough for everyone, but that's actually fine because even with the direct rift functionality, you'll be able to use extensions as it won't be seen as a different device with an extension. So you can just extend USB 2.0 and HDMI, which is quite common, and you'll be fine. Speaking of direct rift, Holy crap, this thing's awesome. You don't have to extend your screen anymore and you don't have to have any weird manual adapter targeting settings on shortcuts for any of your executables. It just kind of works. You run an executable that says direct to Rift and it goes to the Rift, which will be sitting on your desk in a sleep mode before it's activated. And then once you run that executable, it will wake up, it will go to the Rift screen and everything will work. That is, as long as you're not running it through like an HDMI splitter, which shows up as, as a different device, or something like a Avermedia capture card, which will actually show up as an Avermedia capture card. The computer needs to be able to see that the HDMI plugged in is an Oculus. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend a DK2 to anyone right now, but I obviously thought it wasn't a terrible idea as I personally purchased it for myself. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the forum, let me know in the comments down below. Would you be interested in buying one right now? And speaking of saving money by not buying a DK2, who wouldn't want to save money on their new phone plan? Today's video sponsor, Ting, claims that 98% of people would save money by switching to their mobile service. Their whole thing is they want customers to have the benefits of a small mobile carrier, like personalized customer service, where you actually get to speak with a human being, rather than hearing, our menu options have changed every three seconds, and simple flexible billing options that are designed to save you money, but without the typical small carrier issue of not getting good enough reception because they're on on some janky small network. They're 100% upfront about the fact that they're actually running on the Sprint network. So hit up the link in the video description now to try out their savings calculator where you can enter the details from your last three bills and see if you'll save money switching to Ting's pay only for what you use system which is kind of awesome. All right guys, so the thing is, I'm gonna need you to comment down below in the description and on the forum about what I asked before earlier, if you guys think a DK2 is right to purchase now. Also, like, dislike, favorite, describe, describe, subscribe, share, and while you're on the forum, if you don't like the ads, become a contributor to get rid of all of them. And if you don't like my shirt or your shirt, go to the link in the description down below to purchase one there. And if you're thinking about buying anything on Amazon anytime soon, jump into the description as well. Follow that link to help us out and change your bookmarks to our little affiliate code on Amazon to help us out. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.